Welcome to another Wisdom for Life. Uh, this is part of our series on the virtual workplace, and I'm here with David Hepworth. Hi, David. Um, Hi. We, David is the lead creative in learning for Aviva in the UK, um, and we're going to start off today by talking about the very sort of specific current issues that we're facing within the virtual workplace. So, David, if you could just give us a little bit, first of all, about your background and what you do at Aviva. Yeah, of course. Thank you, John. So, uh, so yeah, uh, my role in Aviva very much is centred on the kind of the management, creation and delivery of digital learning to, to our colleagues and, and support networks, mostly across the UK, but, but also with a, a slight global twist. So we support all of our kind of core markets for our 33 million customers. Uh, getting up out of bed every day to try and make sure that we're, we're here for what our customers need, which is supporting them when things don't go quite so right. So, uh, so yeah, me, me and my team, we create lots of content. We create content and we manage and administer all of those delivery systems like learning management systems and, and awesome things like that. Okay, great. And so presumably, like everybody else, things are changing very rapidly for you at the moment. What's the, what's the current situation? Yeah, it's a, it's a strange time and, and I, I'm getting slightly um, tired of describing it as that as well, to be fair. I think every day it's a stranger time than the day before, but, you know, no one's alone right now as, as you know, especially, you know, as we record this, you know, there was an announcement by the government yesterday in relation to, to technically what is a lockdown. And um, so, you know, the, the, the challenges that I think every business is facing right now is making sure that both our colleagues and, and, and people are safe and secure and, and well cared for and looked after uh, with well-being right at the, the heart of the uh, of the equation but but equally keeping the lights on and making sure that we're there for our customers when, when they need it most um, and, it, and I guess in the nature of our business that's actually quite a, a powerful moment you know uh, with all this going on you might still have a car accident and, and need some help at the roadside you you might still you know need to invoke especially in the current crisis you know a health claim or something like that so so our big challenge right now is is very much on supporting our workforce moving to a more kind of level of remote working, which for many is is not too different to normal, uh, but for large swathes of our communities, and, and I'm guessing this is the same across the uh, society now, is this is actually quite a big shift. Um, and so a, a lot of our energy in the last kind of week and a half or so has been very much on rapidly pulling together the right guidance and support for our leaders and for our people to make that adjustment as easy as possible, as well as getting them the equipment that they need to be able to, to kind of, you know, still come in and, and, and do a, a decent job, irrespective of where they find themselves on this wonderful planet right now. Yeah. And are you seeing, because I guess if we'd sort of been able to predict this situation, we would have been talking about shock and everyone being like amazed at, at the sudden transformation of the workplace. Are you seeing that or are you seeing more of a sort of can do attitude or you know, how is it playing out? I mean, that's a great question. I mean, broadly speaking, I think we're seeing a real shine and resilience from, from our friends and colleagues. And I think that's not exclusive to any business. You know, I'm, I, I talk to lots of organisations. I'm, I'm active in my community. Um, and I think, you know, collectively, what, what we're seeing here is the, uh, without going too cheesy, the best of Britain, really, isn't it? You know, we, 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 we face into these moments and we support each other. So, you know, I think it's a it's a big culture shock. It's a big shift that we're asking of folks. Uh, you know, some big differences that people are being asked to make. Um, but I think on on the whole, everyone's very very balanced. Uh, understand the challenges that we're facing and uh, and are trying to have a, an optimistic attitude. And um, don't get me wrong, it comes with challenges and you know lots of unique circumstances for individuals at the moment, especially when you know, uh, their attention will either be on their, their kind of physical, emotional well-being and those of their families around them, uh, but, but also things like their financial well-being. You know, all of these factors come into a play and there, there are two balancing acts to be had now, our physical well-being and our, and our financial well-being as the, as the markets have seen some interesting times as well of late. So, you know, I think, but generally speaking, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been blown away um, just by the, the kind of the, the response, the flexibility, um, you know, and I, and I guess the embracing as well of, of kind of having to change the way we do things. And I know we'll get into some of that in our conversation today, but we are we are seeing that level of flexibility and adaptability from from friends and colleagues that, you know, in, in previous times we've always faced resistance in, you know. 
So I think, you know, we'll, we'll get into this with the legacy of this, I'm sure, later on. But yeah, there's, I've been blown away. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to be part of a community that's responding like it is right now. Yeah, I think there's, there's people saying that across all organisations at the moment, aren't there? But um, with regards to that sort of embracing uh, of the situation, I guess that's a two-way thing. Are you seeing, you know, when we when we were working from home historically or when we were doing virtual meetings like this, there was sort of still some effort to maintain professional etiquette with kids at home and, you know, with the UK currently in lockdown. What are you seeing change there? Is, is there a new attitude to this sort of environment? Uh, Every morning, most folks are doing Joe Wick PE classes with their kids. I mean, li- li- literally every call I've gone through recently, it's either on in the background or, or, or they've just come off going, oh my, oh my goodness, that was only the warm up. Um, so, you know, I think generally speaking, there's a, we've been really honest with all of our colleagues and, and, and equally with our customers and just saying, look, you know, it's straight, it's changing times. We're doing what we have to do. And um, there are going to be moments when your kids are in the background because, you know, we, we've been very clear with our colleagues, you know, if you if you need support, you know, to stay at home with the family, then that's your priority. And, and we will flex in every way we possibly can and, and deliver working from home arrangements where possible to enable that to, to continue. Um, so I think, you know, mostly speaking, all of us are in the same boat right now. So all of us have got kids in the background. Thankfully, I've got teenagers who are upstairs. Uh, you might not be able to hear it, but I can feel the bass coming through the, 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 the ceiling right now. It's not coming across. You're OK. Good, good, good. But I can feel the vibrations, you know. So I think we're, we're all going to have our own kind of challenges and, and nuances. And I think, you know, what, again, going back to the point earlier, what we're seeing is, is a resilience to that and, and acceptance to that. And, and we've just got to be flexible. You know, everyone's trying really hard to make things work. And, um, and that means, you know, offering some compromise, doing things a little bit differently, lowering those standards of etiquette and professionalism and, and embracing those moments because, you know, we've got, to, we've got to rally together and we can't get everything done. You know, the, the, the pace of what we want to work at is, is, is lessened with all the disruption. Uh, lots of projects, I'm sure, up and down the country and different businesses will be asked to ask that question. Are you putting a strain on your operational requirements and, and can you dial this back? So there's going to be lots of moments i think where you know the, the old rules of, of playing the game are technically out the window and it's about it's about just digging in and and doing what's right and, and being flexible and and trying to be understanding i think you, if you've got kids or you've had kids you you can really relate to it i think you know one, one of the pieces of advice we're asking folks especially those who maybe can't relate as well to to those who have family challenges is trying to explain to them the uh, or bring to life to them at least the um the, the challenges that that brings and the desire and energy that you know mothers and fathers up and down the uk you know that they're facing into to to still want to contribute to this challenge you know they they, they you know we've heard the, the kind of the warlike description of this but and, and there's, a, there's a reason for that isn't there we're all kind of stepping in so you know i think you know we, we've just got to be really flexible really open and and be kind yeah and as well as those sort of behavioural uh, changes, obviously this is throwing up some technical issues. Um, how are you guys at Aviva dealing with that in terms of, because if people aren't used to working from home, suddenly it's, it's a big technical challenge, isn't it, as well? Oh, 100%. And, and there's, <clears throat> I think there's layers of technical challenge, to be honest with you, John, as well. So, I mean, at the, at the heart of that issue, you have the kind of okay, what tech is at your disposal within your organization. So, you know, most organizations, I would imagine, are on an 0365 enterprise. And so they'll be fairly familiar with, with tools like Teams or, or Yammer uh, and, and SharePoint and, and things. Others maybe less so, but hopefully you're more familiar with, with tools like WebEx or Zoom or, or, or WhatsApp or any of those in between. So I think that the, the, the awareness of the tool estate is, um, is going to vary depending on your organization. But I think the, the first challenge we've encountered especially is, is, is trying to raise the standard of baseline knowledge. So can I do the basics? Can I make a call? Can I do a chat? Can I tag someone? How do I actually kind of navigate those simple elements? And we got ahead of the curve on, on this, to be honest with you, John. So a couple of weeks ago, we, we saw this, this was, was, was coming. We rapidly pulled together, you know, two or three minute bite-sized pieces of content to ready people. Um, 
but but equally we're, we're, we're quite blessed as an organization in the sense of we are you know many years down the line now of, of these tools being adopted so so actually that the broad awareness of them is is um, is not been a, a huge challenge for us where we've seen probably the largest challenge is in how we safeguard things like bandwidth so again we won't be alone in in, in this you know we've got you know Roughly seventeen thousand people in the UK who who work for Aviva. We, we've got you know over thirty million customers, and um, we need to make sure that if those customers need us, they can contact us, and that those people who are are dealing with those customers have the ability to access networks. So so many of uh, many workers uh, at Aviva, myself included, are, are working to a self imposed what we call a VPN curfew. Uh, which basically means we're working flexibly, you know, we're, we're avoiding joining the network between the hours of, of eight and six where we can. Uh, we're all asking those folks to, to work a little differently. So logging on a little bit early, downloading the documents that you might need for that day in advance. Uh, logging on at the end of the day, reconciling your inbox, uploading things to the cloud, sending those vital emails. Um, so that the actual network performance can stay, you know, rightly so for those who, who need it most. And I'm sure, you know, we won't be alone in that. And then, you know, we'll, we'll dial up our, our efforts in the coming weeks and months to make that, you know, even easier for, for folks. But, you know, I think we're, we're balancing an act now is we're rapidly building, you know, work from home hardware assets so that those who don't normally work from home can. So it's a it's a bit of a moving feast right now, but that that's probably the those are the two biggest challenges: getting people kind of comfortable with the technology and the, to, to do the very basics. And, and we've used the storytelling logic for that. Um, and and then as I say, that second one is just being able to join networks. That that can that can be a difficulty. Yeah, and as well as they um, as well as they sort of flexible working practices, it seems as well it's kind of expanding beyond working practices, and because we're all stuck at home it's it work and social is kind of mingling together a little bit are you seeing that in aviva that teams are trying to do things socially as well as professionally oh very much in fact we're we're, we're strongly advocating that and and only in just the last few days we and we're continuing to issue guidance you know every couple of days now we're pulling together new insight and new support uh, and really easy ways for our leaders and our people to kind of gather and, and work with, whether that's, you know, top tips for working remotely, whether that's, you know, how to run virtual meetings, you know, brilliantly. And, and, and for, for some of us, this is what we do day to day. You know, I, technically I'm a home worker. This is what I do every day. But for many of our colleagues, that's not the case at all. And uh, one of the areas in particular that's front of our mind is that social connection. You know, it's... Uh, it's all well and good doing the work and using these technologies, but you know some some top tips that we've kind of crafted is you know think about things like virtual coffees. You know, don't be shy at banging a virtual coffee in the diary with someone and and taking a break with a colleague. You know, uh, adopting things like daily stand ups with your team. You know, get some fifteen minute catch ups. How you all doing? How you feeling? Any new things that are kind of on your mind? Any challenges that you're facing? Making sure that folks know where to go and how to connect where you're just talking about them, not the work. You know, there's a place for the work, don't get me wrong, and you should talk about the work, but um, in these moments, actually, people come first. And, uh, and, and I think, you know, people, people re will remember how you made them feel in moments like this. And, and as leaders, especially as leaders like ourselves, it's, a, it's, a, it's incumbent upon us to, to reach out to our teams, make sure that they know they're supported, uh, create the the kind of the, the moments for them to connect and give them permission you know take away the the restrictions and the barriers because I think one of the biggest challenges I, I found when I first started working from home and I, I see this with anyone else who, who first joins it's that presenteeism complex it's like I need to be available 24 7 you know the the notification kind of you know rings on the phone and I'm jumping at it well it doesn't change, you know, you, you, you have a shift pattern, you work the time that you work, you know, uh, you do your work, you do it as best you possibly can and you log off with pride, you know, at the end of the day and celebrate those successes. One of the biggest challenges that I think folks need to be thinking about now though is, is how do I say thank you? How do I, how do I recognize those who've gone that, that extra yard and, and really made a difference uh, to, to what they're trying to do. And I think, you know, we are asking more and more people to be thinking about how can you recognise that exceptional performance? That's great. Thanks for that, David. Um, we're going to go on and talk in subsequent 
discussions about the sort of medium and longer term impacts of all this change. But as uh, with regards to facing the current issues, I think that's a really good summary and a really interesting approach that you're all taking over there. So thanks very much for your time. You're very welcome, John. Thank you very much.